Hello my beautiful friends, my name is Alexandria and today I am here on fucking Pride Month to bring you my TBR for the month of June. I'm very excited about this month for many reasons. Uh, it's Pride Month, it's also my birthday month, it's Gemini season. I'm feeling great. Without further ado, if you would like to see all of the books I plan on reading this month, then just keep on watching. <music> tell I am currently getting over a sickness. My child got me sick about a week ago and I am on the road to recovery. Hopefully I'll be able to get through this video without a coughing fit, but luckily I have some tea with me to drink throughout this video and also I'm going to be sharing this company that has been sending me their teas for a while now. Um, it's a tea subscription service, but I will talk about that a little bit later. But all this being said, I need to go ahead and get into all the books that I am going to be attempting to read this month because we've got a lot of things planned. Um, this is going to be kind of like a TBR slash like library haul because I picked up a shit ton of books from my library yesterday. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and start with the books that aren't a part of any of the readathons slash book clubs that I am doing this month. Um, so I actually finished this book already. It is Clara and the Sun. This is by Kazuo Ishiguro. I did read one of this author's books last month, Never Let Me Go, and absolutely loved it. Our main character is called an AF, which is an artificial friend. Um, so they are basically an AI that is meant to be like kind of a support person for children in this futuristic society. A lot of confusing things happen. A lot of things that I don't understand. A lot of things that I'm not even sure that I need to understand, but I'm overthinking it anyway because that's just how my brain works. Um, but I did indeed read that. I really like Ishiguro's writing, so I wanted to read another one of their books. And then I just started reading Morning Star, which is the third book in the Red Rising series. I read Red Rising in April, I read Golden Sun in May, and then of course I'm reading Morning Star in June. I absolutely love the series. This is one of my favorite science fiction series so far. Following our main character whose name is Darrow. They live in a society that is basically a caste system and he is of the lowest caste which are the Reds. They are working uh, kind of like terraforming Mars to basically prepare it for humans to be able to come and live. Or so they think. Um, he finds out some stuff that's actually going on and that basically they've been lied to by the highest cast, which are the Golds. And basically he goes on this whole journey of getting to the point where he is infiltrating the Golds, basically on the path to tear down the system from the inside. So as far as my book club picks, I am going to be attempting to participate in two book clubs this month. I decided to sign up for Allie's Patreon. I think her book club is called Pocket Pals, and they are reading On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. I had this on my TBR for last month, but didn't end up getting to it. Not sure how that's gonna go because I have been attempting to dive into the world of Discord, and it is very overwhelming to me, like my brain. My brain just can't handle it. Um, so I would really like to get to this book. I've heard a lot of really good things for that this author is a really beautiful writer. This is basically the story of a son who is writing a letter to his mother who can't read. Um, I did start this previously, I think sometime last year, or maybe the year before last, um, but I ended up not being able to continue on with it because it was just a little bit triggering, um, but I would like to be able to get to it. And then for my other book club pick, I don't have the book here currently, but I've been wanting to participate in the NB book club. This is a book club that is run by Jesse from Bowties and Books. I just haven't gotten a chance to be able to participate in any of the reads for the months previously, but I would like to get to it this month, um, especially since it is Pride Month. The book club pick for this month is called A Year Without a Name. I believe it is a memoir. I'm not really sure what it's about, but I did hear some really good things. I saw some reviews, um, and I actually really enjoy memoirs, and I haven't read one in a minute, I feel like. so. I would like to be able to get to that. Um, I'll probably just end up purchasing that. So moving on to the readathons that I have chosen to participate in for this month, I'm going to be participating in. Oh god, I'm 
maybe we're just fitting in three. Um, one is going to be the Studio Ghibli readathon. I was so stoked when I saw that this was happening in my birthday month. I'm like, how could you possibly pick the most perfect theme for a readathon in the month of my birth? The gods were truly shining upon me. <laughs> I will put all the details to that down below. I was going to be super ambitious and try to do like nine different prompts. I must have lost my mind. So I was like, let's rein it back, let's dial it back, and then if I end up being able to read any more, then I will do so. Um, but at this point, I am going to just be following the prompts for Kiki's Delivery Service. All right, so for the first prompt for Kiki's Delivery Service, I have a book that is focused on mental health, and for that I have Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle. Um, so I talked about this in my previous vlog video, and then in a couple of vlog videos, a while back I was just talking about experiencing burnout and I realized I had like a little epiphany that I have not gotten out of this kind of place of being in limbo with burnout and so I had heard uh, these authors talking on Brene Brown's podcast and it kind of blew my mind so I immediately had to pick up this book and so I'm going to be reading this. I'm probably going to listen to it on audiobook from Audible and also read it at the same time so I can like highlight or maybe annotate. Never done that before, but maybe I'll do that this month. Um, whatever it is that I am going to be reading from this because I feel like it's going to be really, 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 really beneficial. And then the next prompt is to read a book that has witches or a magical element. And for that, I have two books picked. Um, so I have the group book, which is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. I actually started reading this a couple of months ago, but I didn't end up finishing it for whatever reason. But I decided to go ahead and buy it. It's different from the movie, um, but it also has a lot of similarities to the movie as well. I feel like this will be a pretty quick read. Um, so I have that as an option for that prompt. And then also I have this one kind of as a double up for this prompt and also the last prompt, which is At Long Last, I believe. Um, so that's supposed to be a book that you've had on your TBR for a long time. Yeah, I still have not gotten to this. I do not know why. I think I might be slightly like intimidated and also doing that thing that I like to do where I put off doing something because I think that I'm gonna enjoy it. This is obviously Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I have been wanting to read this for a long time. It's following a girl who starts going to a school and she finds out that there is kind of like this secret society um, that are supposed to be descendants from King Arthur's knights or something like that. I've been wanting to get to this. I've heard so many people say so many good things about it. I just haven't gotten a chance to read it yet, but hopefully this month, since I have it for those two prompts, I will be able to get to it. Holy shit, it's almost 500 pages. Shouldn't have looked at that. It's fine. We're fine. We can do it. Maybe. But that is all the books that I have planned to read for the Studio Ghibli readathon this month. Still don't know if it's Ghibli or Ghibli. Who knows? Um, but I will go ahead and move on to the next readathon that I'm going to be participating in, and that is the Queer Lit Readathon. I believe that this runs from June 6th, which is my birthday. Hello! It goes just the entire week, so seven days. And there are props for this readathon. There is a bingo board, but as we know, if you don't know, you'll know now, I oftentimes do not plan ahead. So. Um, I'll let y'all know which books I plan on choosing for each prompt. So obviously for this readathon and kind of for the month in general, I wanted to mainly read books uh, that are queer. To start out, I do have a ebook that I purchased. It was like $1.99. Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics. This is a, I believe, historical romance novel. And can we just like look at the cover for a minute? because it makes my heart very happy. I don't really know what it's about, but that cover just got me. Okay, so the first book that I'm gonna talk about, I have it somewhere around here, but I can't find it currently, but it is actually the group book for the Queer Lit Readathon, and that is Freshwater by Akweke Amezi. Um, I believe this is about our main character who goes through some kind of traumatic situation and basically starts developing um, these different kind of alternate 
versions of themselves. Something really kind of random and interesting about me is that I tend to get very focused and obsessed with like certain mental, physical illnesses. Um, and then I'll just start like researching and watching videos and watching documentaries and like everything about these things. And for a while I was really interested in this specific disorder. So it'll be interesting to read a book from this perspective. I'm interested to see how the author um, kind of shares the character's mental health journey um, and experience with this. I feel like it is going to be something that may be a little bit triggering, maybe a little bit heavier, um, but I have heard a lot of really good things about not only this author in general, but about this book, and so I'm excited to get to it. The next book that I have here is Let's Talk About Love. This is about a main character who is asexual. I don't think I've ever read a book, a novel, where the main character is asexual. Um, yeah, I think this will probably be the first one. Um, and this is YA, so I'm thinking this will be a pretty quick read. And yeah, this just seems kind of like a fun coming of age, uh, coming to the realization or like exploring yourself and your sexuality and understanding who you are as a person um, type of story. Like, look at this cover. Look at... Look at this human having such a beautiful, wonderful time with that afro and beautiful dark skin. Man. Hmm. I love to see it. So the next book that I have is called I Wish You All the Best. I actually don't know anything about what this is about. I believe it's a YA book, so I'm assuming it's like a coming of age type of story. It's just three words. I am non-binary, but that's all it takes to change everything. At turns, heartbreaking and joyous, I Wish You All the Best is both a celebration of life, friendship, and love, and a shining example of hope in the face of adversity. Like I said, I've heard a lot of really good things about this book. I didn't like originally have this plan to be on my TBR, but it is here. It is queer, I'd like to get into it. The next book that I'm super excited about, Heartstopper Volume 3. Oh my god, you have no idea how excited I am about this. Like, you don't even understand. I've been waiting and wanting to read this since I read the second volume. I know that the fourth volume is coming out later this year. Oh my god, I just love Nick and Charlie so much, and I'm so excited to see where they go on their journey. It's just about two boys and their relationship. Oh my god, can you see? Can you see? They're so cute. I love them so much. It makes me all like warm and fuzzy inside. And then the next book that I have is Bingo Love. This is a graphic novel comic type book. Again, I've heard a lot of really good things about this. Two characters that fall in love when they're younger. I'm just looking at the pictures trying to figure this out because I don't really know what it's about. Um, two characters that maybe fall in love when they're younger and then they reconnect later on. I don't know. I'm not sure, but it looks really, really cute. Um, my child has obviously already looked through all of these and said gross at everybody kissing in every single one of these books. So. That's fun. The artwork looks absolutely beautiful. This is gonna be a quick read thing. I keep saying that I'm just excited about everything because I am. I'm so excited. You have no idea how excited I am. I'm so excited that I'm losing my voice, which probably is my cue to take a little bit of a break so that I can tell you a little bit about the tea company that has been sending me their awesome teas for the last couple months. So I'm gonna quickly share with you all the teas that I got in this month's subscription box. I will have all the information down below, um, but I would love for you all to check them out. This video is not sponsored, but they did send these to me to try out and to share with you all. So I would love for you all to check them out because they're honestly really great. And I wouldn't be sharing them if I didn't really, really enjoy them. So I have two 
more queer books on my TBR for this month, and then I have a few graphic novels that I'll just quickly share with you all. Um, so I have Darius the Great is Not Okay. I had this on my TBR for last month for the Asian Readathon, but I didn't end up getting to it. It says Darius Kellner speaks better Klingon than Farsi, and he knows more about Hobbit social cues than Persian ones. He's a fractional Persian, half his mom's side, and his first ever trip to Iran is about to change his life. I feel like this will definitely be a little bit more on like the hard-hitting contemporary side, um, but with the Hobbit references, I'm here for this. All right, and then the last queer book that I have is a little bit of a thick one. This is a graphic novel and this is called On a Sunbeam. It says on the back, two timelines, second chances, one love. A woman joins a crew to rebuild beautiful broken structures throughout space and finds a new family. Two teen girls meet at boarding school and fall deeply in love, only to learn the pain of loss. Sounds like it'll put me on an emotional ride, but I am ready for it. I'm also going to be participating in the Queer Blackathon this month. So I am reading a couple of queer black books, but I will pick up the group book that has been chosen for the Queer Blackathon. I did the Blackathon in March. Again, this is run by Jessie from Bochai's Books. Absolutely love their channel. Um, and so when I saw this, I was like, what are you doing to me? I'm already adding way too much to my TBR, but I can't say no. So um, I am excited because it's actually just going to be a 48 hour readathon, so I think I can do it. The group book for the Queer Blackathon is Sorrowland by River Solomon, and I've been wanting to read a book by this author for a really long time because I've heard a lot of really good things. And that readathon is very chill. You can read the group book, you don't have to read the group book, you can read another uh, book by a queer black author or with queer black main characters. Um, it's just kind of whatever you feel like doing. Last but not least, I do have some manga. I am still reading this Spy Family manga. I read that on the Shonen Jump app, but I decided to get a few manga from my local library that isn't on that app, and I picked up the first four volumes of The Way of the House Husband. This looks really good. It looks really entertaining. I've also heard really good things about the anime, um, so I wanted to be able to read the manga first before I got into the anime, but yes, I'm excited to get to these as well, so I'll be trickling trickling i'll be sprinkling these in between all the other books that i'm reading hopefully to give myself a little bit of lightness in between the heaviness that i may or may not be reading this month so i'm gonna go ahead and end off this video so i can go ahead and get some reading done because i've got a lot to read